What's up, Ozones? Welcome to the Ozone, and welcome, finally, to another FNAF Theory Review. This is Ruined Edition. I don't know why I, I said that. Like, everything from now is probably going to be Ruined Edition, but um, this is FNAF Security Breach Ruined Edition. Ruin has come out since my last theory review, and so today we're going to be reacting to some Ruin theories for the first time. I actually haven't been very active recently in the community, so I don't really know what has happened, and I don't really know what theories have come out of Ruin, but we're going to see two theories today, one by John from FNAF, and the other from Matt Pat from Game Theory. These are going to be two interesting videos, I think, to say the least, because um, they, are, they are very controversial theorists nowadays in the community, but I'm excited to get into them nevertheless. I feel like they have good ideas, um, it's just not exactly, it's not always what Scott has intended, I, I don't think, but um, nevertheless, I think we should get straight into it. First one we're going to get into is FNAF's video, so he actually messaged me about this video, he, he was, he was like, he responded to one of my tweets and he was like, hey, uh, <laughs> just just wait till my Ruin Theory, and now it's come out, and I haven't watched it yet, it's been out for like three weeks, I'm so sorry, John. Uh, but anyway, I reckon we should just get straight into it, and uh, see what the crack is with this. Uh, I'm kind of scared, I'm not gonna lie, but let's just go straight into it. Two weeks ago, I went live on my YouTube channel to play Ruin and see if I could find any new easter eggs. And during my search for easter eggs, Scott Cawthon himself joined my stream. And I got to get Wait, a really? peek of the theory I'm gonna share with you today. This was his reaction. Very interesting theory. Very interesting theory. I know it is, Scott. Obviously, he can't confirm or deny anything, Ooh. but it was really cool to see him in my stream. This theory is one of my most ambitious, and I'm super excited to share it with you. All okay. I ask is that you keep an open mind and remember this is just a theory. One of the things I love to do when making FNAF theories is look for the little details that help solve the Yes, I love that. I, feel I like love that's that. that's something I'm good at. So when I started playing Ruin, I got overwhelmed. Steel Wolf Studios gave us a game where there's illusions everywhere, an AR world and the real world, and there was just so much to look at that I didn't even know where to start. Yeah. So I decided instead to take a step back and look at the story they're trying to tell us. On a very basic level, Ruin oh, is no. a little girl <laughs> who breaks into an abandoned mall to try and find her friend that she swears is trapped in there but it turns out that he wasn't trapped at all and she was tricked when i thought about the game like that i started to notice something this isn't it's the, the first silver time eyes heard this story. the silver eyes trilogy were the first ever fnaf books to be released and on a very basic level the first book is about a group of friends who go and explore a mall that was built on top of an old freddy's pizzeria while they explore the old pizzeria they have a run-in with william afton aka springtrap that yeah. sounds just like what happens in security breach we explore well a mall yeah that was built on top sure Sure. old freddy's pizzeria and while exploring the pizzeria we have a run-in with springtrap so if security breach is the first book what's the second book we're in, in yeah the second book the twisted ones a tornado hit the town and the mall is now destroyed we learned that the mall was set to be demolished but because of the tornado the demolition was put and i reckon he thinks the fourth closet will be help book, wanted the too connections to what we saw in ruin kept piling up the mall in the books was destroyed by a tornado the mall in the games was destroyed by an earthquake the mall in the books was set to be demolished but was put on hold. Yeah. In ruin, we see a giant wrecking ball that started to demolish the building, but now just sits there. In Ruin, Cassie's friend Gregory is calling out for help. You have to find me. I'm trapped in the sinkhole under the raceway. Following his call leads Cassie to a giant cave with God damn it. Rooms, a big waterfall, and a facility full of carnival-themed mascot. I'm gonna pause it there. I, like, this is great, by the way. Like, the amount of connections you're you're digging deep into like a rabbit hole right no pun intended and it's really it's really fascinating to see how many connections you can make to this because i'll i'll, I'll give him i'll give him the benefit of the doubt there are a lot of connections to silver eyes the silver eyes trilogy there are a lot and uh and i'm not going to deny that i'm not going to deny that at all there are a lot of parallel, like, it, it's a parallel story at this point, and, and I, I, I very much see that. Maybe it's the direction Steel will want it to go. They're probably like, well, look at these books. Maybe we could, we, maybe we could twist them a little bit and form them into the games. The only thing is, I feel like even if it was based upon the original novel trilogy, I kind of feel like that doesn't, that doesn't give us 
anything. I don't think we can imply things because of that. I think it's just a cool connection. I get that Scott likes to do things intention like Scott doesn't do anything or Scott doesn't do random easter eggs let's take that quote for example and I don't know if that really applies here it's a, it is a difficult one because it it does connect to the books but we do have more important books I I think anyway um Tales from the Pizzaplex and so yeah I don't know um I I think there are connections and I'm not going to deny that but I don't know if we can use them to our um to our benefit you know all of this stuff that probably felt very new and confusing also happened in this book charlie swears that her missing brother sammy is calling out to her following this call leads her to a giant cave with glowing mushrooms a waterfall and a facility with a bunch of carnival themed mascot costumes charlie uh. swears that her missing brother is behind a door covered in concrete cassie swears that gregory is behind a door covered in concrete and both in this book and the game it ends up being a trap but right before Cassie and yeah, there are connections. The there are. Comes in and saves them. In Ruin, Roxy came in and tackled the animatronic. In the book, Foxy came in and tackled the animatronic along with the other OG animatronics. Even the fate of both Charlie and Cassie is left a mystery at the end. The Twisted Ones literally ends with it looking like Charlie died, but then they hint that she might have survived. Just like Ruin. The elevator falls, and then after the credits, we hear this. We yeah, have Roxy. Cassie. Cassie, Scott yeah. isn't just taking ideas from these books, he's taking the stories themselves and using them as heavy inspiration for the games. If we look yes. at these books to yes, I agree. what happened in Ruin, we would have been almost 100% correct. So if the first book is Security Breach and the second book is Ruin, what's the third book about? Help well, wanted those carnival themed too. mascot costumes weren't first or introduced into in the Tales books, they were introduced in the Twisted Ones to foreshadow what was to come in the fourth closet. When we visit Circus Baby's Pizza world a carnival themed restaurant we also visit the book's version of the sister location bunker and meet all of the fun time animatronics and if this pattern continues that would mean help wanted 2 would be the fourth closet and where are we going in help wanted 2 the sister location bunker to meet the fun time animatronics if ruin taught me anything it's i agree with that these i agree with that figure out what's going to happen next so i think that's I good that money that we're also going to see circus baby's pizza world and help wanted 2 need more i, I hope While so searching through the I game so. files of ruin maz on Twitter found a note that Steve Let's go. left in an old version of the Mimic Chase area. Quote, something cool that maybe foreshadows carnival, pending JTOP's thoughts. <laughs> we definitely don't visit a carnival at the end of Ruin, uh. so we must be visiting this carnival in Help Wanted 2. In the epilogues of the Tales books, the main characters were hanging out at a carnival before heading to the Yeah, Pizza there place. are a lot of carnival. In in, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just going to say that. Scott made before yeah. Security Breach released. Features posters advertising a circus with a There's a lot of circus imagery after henry left the robot behind afton came in and stole it turning it into what we now know as baby the baby isn't mine <laughs> Has the title of the book, The Fourth Closet. If this sounds familiar, I've actually talked about this before. Last year, I pointed out the Nightmare Yon <laughs> You talk about it every video for now. <laughs> Charlie possesses the puppet, so Nightmare Yon would be the metaphorical evil slash dark version of Charlie. While playing through Ruin, I noticed that the Nightmare Yon plushies were back. Stop, yes. evil. They put this in the game to just taunt me. But it wasn't until I, I, yeah, I need to, I need to talk I about that again. Just back, they're once again hidden throughout. Hidden, yeah, yeah. Most notably in one specific place during the part of the game where the mimic is chasing you you enter this hall oh yeah elevator, yeah and tucked behind some boxes in the corner is a nightmare -y it's terrifying I don't know if this is Steve just messing with me but putting one of those plushies in the most lore heavy part of the game feels intentional you know what else feels intentional throughout the game you can collect different plushies every plushie features a character we see at the pizzaplex except nightmare a baby plushie and a night oh yeah i'm, I'm baby yeah uh... and the evil version of Charlie. In the fourth closet, Baby, an evil version of Charlie, was revealed as the big bad. There's also so many weird connections to Baby in this game. There's this room full of half scrap baby plushies with green eyes and half baby. I don't know what to think about this room. Baby is synonymous with ice cream, and the Fredbear cutout we see in one of the endings features him holding an ice cream. Okay, in his yeah. Hands. But... Also, in that ending, we see everyone sitting on a hill enjoying an ice cream. Ruin itself also plays just like Sister Location. In Sister Location, you never know if you should trust Baby. Baby. In Ruin, All you right. never know if you should trust Gregory. Both games end with them telling us to go left or right. Go forward and left. 
Keep going. Go right. Keep going. And both games feature that's, an ending with That's that's pretty close to be fair. Connection. Baby also reveals that she wants to steal Charlie's identity so she can look more human. This is just like the ending of the Fazbear Frights books. Eleanor, Eleanor. I, think I was just thinking Eleanor. Baby, was yeah. revealed as the big bad. And her main thing is stealing people's identities by ripping off their limbs. This plot point of a robot wanting to steal a human's identity is something we see over and multiple over times in the Fazbear Frights. Frights and Tales books. Story after story. Yeah. Yeah. Hammering this idea of a robot wanting to look more human into our heads. So both in the Silver this is a good trilogy track. <laughs> and the Fazbear Frights books, we have a version of Baby being revealed as the Big Bad, with their main thing being they want to steal someone's identity. But at the end of Ruin, the Big Bad is revealed to be. <laughs> By now, I'm sure you've heard of the mimic. <laughs> the skeleton first introduced the oh, boy. built to mimic whatever it sees. Yeah. Here's a quick summary of the mimic story from the Tales I... A guy named Edwin who works I as know all this. For if you've watched any of my recent theories, you know that I believe this story is a parallel to Henry's story from the Silver Eyes trilogy. And after figuring out that Scott is using the Silver Eyes trilogy as heavy inspiration for the games, that belief has only been strengthened. In the Silver Eyes, Henry built a robot that mimics his daughter, Charlie. Henry then poured his agony into the robot and left it behind. Only for so did to steal Edwin, it and yeah. Into what we now know as Baby. Baby was now uh... a robot version of Henry's kid, just like the Mimic. And I think a very similar version of this story happened in the games as well. I think Henry built this endoskeleton to mimic his daughter, Charlie. Yeah. After Charlie's death, Henry left it behind, only for Afton to steal it and use it to help build what we now know as Baby. The main goal of Eleanor and Baby in the Silver Eyes trilogy was to look more human by stealing someone's identity. And I think this endoskeleton that was built to mimic Charlie also wants the same thing. It was built to mimic Charlie, but it doesn't look human. Just like the robots wanting to be human stories Scott's been telling us for years now, it wants to be human. It wants to steal Cassie's identity. Need more proof? Throughout Ruin, you can find these comics that Cassie <laughs> Need more proof? Gregory. These comics tell us that most of the endings that happened in Security Breach were not real and were just made yeah, up in Gregory's yeah. head. Including the Burn Trap ending. During the Burn Trap ending, of security breach that one's debatable that was camping out down there helping to bring afton back to life we see that afton was like how would he know about bone trap in the first place window on the front of it in security breach fury's rage vanny's boss battle takes place in a factory full of animatronic limbs yeah and torsos, i'm one that looks like, like the fourth charlie yeah something <laughs> and that thing that she's trying to rebuild is also being kept in a similar pod to burn trap but it's not burn trap it's eleanor a version of baby that's known for ripping off people's limbs and stealing Stealing their identity, just like the mimic ripped It's interesting you said as Eleanor, not just like the fourth Charlie. Identity. But how could this Endo be baby if she was scooped in sister location and burned in FNAF 6? Well, in the Tales books, it's revealed that the mimic loves putting on costumes, just like you see in Ruin. But there's one specific costume that's been mentioned multiple times. The Jester? The Jester costume, yeah. which is what baby is. She's dressed up just like a Jester. I, I don't the know. the most recent time this Jester costume was brought up, it was revealed that it isn't just a normal costume. It's, it's a, a spring lock suit. A Jester just spring like lock how there's a spring lock suit in a... Has put on and walked in Entertainment Charlie rentals. Charlie describes springlock suits in the Silver Eyes by saying, quote, I think they were costumes. Sometimes people wore them, and sometimes my father put them onto the robots. Springlock suits can be put onto endoskeletons. And if this book is really hinting that Baby is a springlock suit, that would line up with what we see at the end of Ruin. This is Baby's endoskeleton, just without all the wires and the shell that comes with the springlock suit. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't believe that. I don't think that, um... First of all, we know what Baby's endoskeleton looks like, and it it, it definitely doesn't look like the Mimic. Uh, and there's definitely, there's other things that the Mimic looks more like, and acts more like, and those go that by the name of Burn Trap and Glitch Trap. Anyway, anyway, anyway. I don't, I really, really, I love how you're thinking about this. This is, it's great that you are putting this option out here and defending your stance. Um, and I think that, I, I do, I, I agree with you. I think a lot of inspiration has come from the original books. Do I think that the Mimic is actually baby? I, I don't see how that's entirely possible, right? I don't, so no, it, it's really difficult to talk about this sort of thing because there is a disconnect between us 
one of us believes that the books or, or the tales books are completely canon and the other um seems to be more drawn to the to the novel trilogy for some reason um but like and and like that that is still up in the air sure but like i feel like when you when you look at the books and you look at them from a perspective of these are 100% canon these happen in the game's timeline then everything just fits into place and there's no baby shadoozle <laughs> there's no charlies and, and stuff like that and and it just makes everything a lot more clearer and that's that's what i look for in theories at least is, is like clarity and making sure everything fits in clean and to me this leaves open a lot of holes i think so it's it's a respectful idea and and i respect the craft but uh i at the moment i'm not fully convinced this is a great video by the way though um I, this is great. The baby springlock suit would essentially be put onto this endoskeleton with the same eyes, teeth, and head shape as baby. I think people forget that in night four of sister location, baby puts us inside a springlock suit. Yeah, that has I didn't forget suits, that. Just like the fun times. So the idea that baby could be a springlock suit isn't too far fetched. But even then, baby got burned in. Yeah, you are right. How could her you are right. Skeleton still be around? Well, throughout sister location, baby is the main character, but we never actually see her until night five. She almost looks like the Golden Freddy suit. There's nothing to hold her up. She's also missing her eyes and teeth. She's missing her endoskeleton. She's posed like that because she's in suit mode. But if this endoskeleton wasn't in baby during sister location, where was it? Well, one notable trait about the mimic is that it messes with technology. But when we get to baby's room and we turn on the lights, we see nothing. Also, as the nights go on, baby's room is the only room where the controlled shocks just straight up stop working. Oh, circus baby, we aren't here to play hide and seek. Let's encourage baby to come. Out I think that's a bit of a weak connection. Shot. I'm sorry. I think it's possible that I, the mimic that was once kind of irrelevant. is now being held in this room, the circus gallery. Need more proof? It's a pretty hmm, popular okay. theory at this point. Okay. The pizzeria Henry uses in FNAF 6 was also Fred Bear's family diner. People say diner, yeah. the secret images of the alleyway in FNAF And therefore, this location bunker would be Charlotte's underneath. Hill. Also, the gameplay of FNAF 6 is literally about upgrading an old pizzeria and turning it into what we see in Security Breach. Now, right. in ruin, and it's simulating a pizzeria. It's that mimic theme again. The FNAF 6 Pizzeria, which only strengthens the theory that they're the same building. Henry just reused and upgraded the building he already owns. Why is this important, you ask? Because on the map in Sister Location, we can see Fred Bear's Family Diner connected right to Baby's room. The circus yeah. gallery, the same room that I believe the mimic was being held in. These mascot costumes were first introduced in the Twisted Ones to foreshadow Circus Baby's Pizza World. We even get a description that sounds just like one of the costumes we see in Ruin. One of the costumes was, quote, a massive contorted bird-like creature with a wide curved beak. These costumes were meant to foreshadow Circus Babies, and Circus Babies was definitely a William Afton thing, so they could be made by William. I mean, the Mushroom Cave was revealed to be William's secret bunker in the Twisted one, so that Here's the thing, sense. when you look at the suits, they're very, very different from regular animatronic suits, springlock suits, fun time suits, all of that pizzazz. What do they look like? They look like a glitch trap suit. They look, they, they, they have stitching. It looks like a vanny suit as well. They have stitchings. It looks self-created. It looks like it's made with like a fabric. So they're very, very different to animatronic suits. They are, they are regular mascot suits and that's the connection there. That's how you can tell that Glitchtrap is part of that kind of roster of Mimic suits. And that's how you can draw a connection between the Mimic and Glitchtrap. And I think that's quite a big point. It was also revealed that the cave and facility where the costumes were found was built under Henry's house. So it's <sighs> possible that these costumes were some of Henry's first creations. I guess we'll have to wait and see. I think Help Wanted 2 is going to pick up right where we left off in Ruin. I mean, the end I, of Ruin I agree with that. elevator falling to the ground. The trailer for Help Wanted 2 has the sister location yeah. elevator. Yeah, I've been saying this for so long. I sister location is still down there. That the digital world and the real world are merging. And Cassie is struggling to know what's real and what's not. I think this is going to be the theme of Help Wanted 2. Along it's been the theme of FNAF for quite a while now. And Circus Baby's Pizza World. Yeah. I know a lot of you probably think I'm insane and there's going to be a lot of angry tweets, but no. I'm not taking any chances anymore. We live in a world where Scott and Steel Wool took almost every single ending in Security Breach, even the fully animated one, and said none of that was real. So anything is possible. The Burn Trap one, again, I, I think it is somewhat next. real, but yeah. And I guess we'll just have to see 
see later this year if I'm onto something or if I'm dead wrong. There's still a ton of things to talk about in this game, like who is Cassie's dad and what's the deal with the scooper. Yeah. So look forward to more theories in the future. Please remember that this was just a theory. Do your own research. Come to your own conclusions. Don't take everything. Well done, as John. Canon, and I hope you enjoy. See you at the circus. That was great. That was a great video from John right there. I actually really enjoyed that. I thought, like, obviously, your your method of storytelling has improved massively. Like, the the video creation, I, I have a lot of respect for personally. I think it's I think it's just improved. It's it's just gone up, and I I really enjoy it. I think it's amazing, um, and and I think that the theory is is okay. Actually, I I think it's fine. Um, I don't I don't believe it, but I think it's um. I think there are there are good parts to it and there are bad parts to it. Obviously, every, every theory has good and bad things on it. Um, and it's fine that it's your theory and you believe it. And uh, I, I do think this is a very good watch for me. I think it, it does set some things in stone. And um, and it definitely, like, it, it, it gives me more... This is why I love doing these sorts of videos. It's because it gives me more perspectives of um of different theories and different people's opinions and i really love going through that i think i think that's really valuable uh when you're a theorist is to listen to others and and i think that more people need to do that more often for this community to be um a lot nicer and and kinder but good video uh again i don't think that baby has it is playing as big of a role as you say i think that I think that she could in Help Wanted 2. I just don't really see it with Security Breach and Ruin. I feel like Elizabeth is somewhere else, right? So, who knows? <laughs> who knows, who knows, who knows? Anyway, with that, I think that was a pretty pretty good video from FNAF. Let's see what game theory uh, the game theorists have for us. I'm kind of scared. I've actually seen one spoiler from this video. And it wasn't it wasn't the greatest thing, so uh, yeah, I am scared. <laughs> but uh, let's get through this. Um, let's get through this. Uh, the game theorists. I I, I actually watched Matt Pat's playthrough of Ruin as well, and um, it was it was interesting. Uh, I feel like he was a little bit closed minded, strangely, which like I don't usually get with Matt Pat, but um, I feel like it was a little bit like. Uh, this is this is this and this is this this tropes, uh yeah, <laughs> uh, and and I feel like they also misinterpreted the books a little bit. But anyway, let's get into game theory. FNAF buried and forgotten. This came out like two weeks ago, so I'm so I'm so early. I'm so early. I admit this DLC has been fantastic. Playing it, it really felt like cool. Steel Wool learned from their mistakes. They Gone definitely the did. That was big yeah. but empty. Gone is the brightly lit neon environments that stopped being scary. Ruin was amazing, man. Glitches that made the game impossible to fully complete. Ooh, hey. Whoa! Oh my god. I was so mad that the they skipped. It feels like we skipped something. I think we broke the game. I think I broke the game for like. It wasn't their fault, time. but okay, yeah. All the glitches are gone. <laughs> so happened to be on my first playthrough, I managed to skip an entire chapter that was filled with the most lore. But hey, consider that my contribution to the speedrunning community. You can call that one the failed lore hunter skip in my honor. Oh It'll my god! Achievement in the world of gaming. We're handed a quote-unquote security mask, one that's meant to help us bypass certain. Puzzles. This is interesting as well. The, the mask. Gregory locked down in the basement. But this, my friends, is not just any mask. This is Vanny's mask, the one that Vanessa wore throughout the entirety of Security Breach. Oh no. No, no, it's not. Using this mask allows us to look into an augmented reality system. Uh oh. Same thing <laughs> we couldn't see before, making us uh. invisible to certain enemies. We can suddenly walk through walls, deactivate security nodes, intentionally teleport, and as I demonstrated earlier, also accidentally teleport sometimes. Mask in hand, we make our way through the pizza plex, <laughs> shutting down the security and encountering the various Glamrock animatronics from the original game, including the bestest boy Glamrock Freddy, though something's a little different about him this time. I can't quite put my finger on it. Ah, it's probably the hmm. fact that he's missing his head. All yeah, yeah, yeah. running from a glitching bunny <laughs> entity that'll summon animatronics to our location if we wear the Vanny mask for too long. Eventually, we deactivate all the security nodes, including Cassie's favorite glam rock, Roxy. Cassie, what are you doing? Oh, this scene is... Oh, I can't. I'm sorry. 
This allows us to head on down to the basement where, surprise, surprise, it wasn't Gregory at all. It's no way! Really? As Gregory was a robot this entire time, <laughs> this thing right here. I don't think anyone fooled for it. Designed to learn from and copy other people and robots. And whoopsie poopsie, we've just released it from its concrete prison. Did Gregory actually betray us in the end? What does the word prototype mean on Freddy's foot exactly? Sure, yeah. And what ending of security breach actually led us to this point in the timeline? Okay. Well, good news there, loyal theorists. I believe I have at least the first batch of questions answered. And oh, oh boy. If I'm right, this game is. <laughs> Will this franchise ever end? Parts of the lore will simultaneously set us up for some massive reveals later this year. Okay, so okay. AR Bunny I'm excited. Friends, we're about to see the hidden truth buried within the ruin. So before he gets into that, we need to talk about the elephant in the room. Vanny's mask. The Vanny mask, V-A-N-N-I, is not the same mask that Vanny wears in the game. It is the same as the Help Wanted mask that we get in Curse of Dreadbear, but it's not the same one that she wears. The designs are completely different, okay? The designs are completely different. They One of them is like fabric that just covers the face, and the other is like, I don't even know what it is, but I feel like you can knock it and it would make this noise. Wait, did it make a noise? Wait, that's not going to work. <laughs> What? Wait, do I have like wood? It would make like a wood noise, I feel like. Kinda. It would make a hard noise. It's like, it's more solid and thicker. And so I feel like... Ugh, it is hard because like... Yes, yeah, she does get that mask at the end of Curse of Dreadbed, but does that mean... Like, I feel like she created her own suit, you know? And I th I think that was that was said in the therapist tapes. Anyway, I think we're getting too in into specific into specifics. Uh, he is technically right. It is Vanny's mask, but I don't think it's the one that she wore in Security Breach. I think it's like a different mask. I might be completely wrong, but that's my opinion. <laughs> Which of the Security Breach endings is canon? Security Breach okay, my opinion. Relationship Princess ending. Quest sure, and Burn Trap ending. Games have had multiple endings. Some I'll have make a video on it soon. <laughs> of seven, but none has ever been so vague about what the intended ending was. Of Security Breach's six potential endings, there were two that felt like real contenders for being the canon choice. The so-called true ending, a two-star ending where Gregory goes into the Pizza Plex's basement to fight Burn Trap, ending in a collapse of the entire building, and the Princess Quest ending. The the only three-star ending of the game where Freddy's dismantled by staff bots and Gregory defeats yeah. the Blitz Trap virus controlling Vanessa. So, now that ruins out, which actually happened? Well, we could say with near 100% certainty that it was Princess Quest. You see, Steel Wool did something that I okay. never expected. On the right track. The comic book style drawings of all the security breach endings into the linchpin of the whole debate. Oh! Yeah. Are we collecting the endings from security breach as it, comics? Yep, throughout Ruin, one of our main collectibles are comic strips. Comic strips depicting images from the base game's various endings. And every comics single one is there except than, uh, Princess Quest. Comics. Each comic comes with a little descriptor like that. These look like Gregory drew them. Gregory should be an artist when he grows up. Gregory was always so <laughs> creative. That last line about Gregory being creative, that tells me that these endings are all made up. They're just stories that Gregory imagined for his own little comic yeah, yeah. series. Inspired yeah. Inspired by the scary true-to-life events. But the, the Burn Trap one is different because it is Burn Trap. Princess Quest ending is real. Well, once you collect all of Gregory's comics, the answer is pretty obvious. Take a look at this. These two are from the Gregory Escapes ending. These two are from the VIP ending. These are from the Loading Dock ending. This one is from the Disassemble Vanny ending. And then, last but not least, is the Burn Trap ending panel. Seems like a pretty extensive list, right? Except there's one ending that's noticeably absent here. Princess Quest. There isn't a single yeah. comic strip in all of Ruin depicting that ending, implying that that one, unlike all the others, was real. But there have to be, there has to, they have to have gone to see Burn Trap because otherwise the whole mimic stuff wouldn't be there. Like the whole security systems, like the Mexus and stuff. And we see Gregory's backpack down underneath the pizza plex, like, and all of the animatronics are decommissioned. So like there has to be this, um, there has to be some sort of crossover. There has to be, I don't know. I feel like they have to have seen Burn Trap and then they would go back and save Vanessa. Um, that's my opinion anyway. I need to look more into it and I need to make an actual video explaining my full thoughts. But that's kind of where I'm at. I feel like both endings are somewhat canon at least. Um, yeah, it's it's odd. But um, 
There you go. <laughs> the beast has been slain. Hell yeah. Actually, the fact that Cassie's given the Vanny mask in the first place also lines up with this ending because it's the only ending where we where Vanny's mask, mask comes off. Behind. Okay. Focus of yeah. Right here, showing us that the mask being left behind is significant. It's still waiting. Around okay, he is he is somewhat Cassie right. To find it and become the new Vanny. And then, last but not least, there's the fact that in Ruin we come across Prototype Freddy. Freddy. A rubble missing his head. Something that again only happens in the Princess Quest. I've seen a lot of so debates about that though. Ending established. Let's just stop right there to talk a little bit more about Freddy, shall we? In Ruin, we come across this headless Freddy, but it's unclear whether it's meant to be our Freddy from Security Breach or not. You see, this Freddy has the word prototype written across his foot, something that is it's just a Fazbear Entertainment thing. Base game. He also has a green present hiding in his stomach, something that's awfully suspicious once you consider Security Breach started with Gregory taking an orange present out of Freddy's stomach. This can't possibly be the same robot then, mm. right? This is one of the big debates that's captured the attention of the Fazbear. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If the Princess Quest ending is correct, then it kind of has to be the same Freddy. It'd be very highly coincidental if not. So how then do you explain all these new features? Well, first, I think it's important to call out that design updates between games, it is nothing new for this franchise. Probably the best known yeah. example of this is the evolution yeah. of Spring, Spring Trap in FNAF 3 to Scrap Trap in FNAF 6. William Afton's basic anatomy, it is nothing alike, despite it being the same dead body in the same rock yeah. suit. Yeah, and even and the minigames. Yeah, a complete yeah. overhaul between his first appearance and now. Or just take a look at any of the other animatronics. Their endos yeah. are real different to the ones at the end of season. And then look at Mimic and Bone Trap. Every one of them has suffered the exact same damage that they did in the previous game. But one detail that can't be replicated is something that I think a lot of the community has started to overlook. Something that can't be denied. And it all relates back to the Vanny Mask. We're told that this mask is known as the Virtual Augmented Neural Network Integration Unit, or Vanny. As the name implies, it allows us to use augmented reality to physically see and access the neural Neural network, that's just a fancy name for AI, controlling the pizza plex. During yeah. the game, we use this ability to make fences disappear, access security nodes, and teleport from location to location. That much is obvious. What's less obvious, though, are how the various endoskeletons behave while we're wearing the mask. As we pass most normal endoskeletons in the game, we see them wrapped in swirling pink code. This shows that they're connected to the network. They're being powered by the AI system in charge of the pizza plex. Now, when Cassie has the Vanny mask off, they'll start chasing us. That's because we're suddenly visible to them. We're just a kid. We're a target but notice what happens as soon as we put the mask on they stop chasing us instead they go it's back because we're invisible to them we've disappeared from them because we're integrated into the ai system we're no longer a kid just like how glamrock freddy can't see vanny Pretty brilliant, subtle storytelling. But now let's get back to the topic at hand, our headless Freddy in Ruin. Unlike every other animatronic, when we put on the mask around Freddy, not only does he stop chasing us, he outright disappears. We can't see him anymore. Yeah. And likewise, he can no longer see us. Why? What makes him so different? What is this trying to tell us? Well, if the Vanny mask jacks us into the Pizza Plex's AI system, his disappearance tells us that he's not a part of that system. He is not swirling in pink code because he's removed from the okay, Pizza Plex's good, network. Good point. How did yeah. that happen? Well, we Saw it at the top of security breach. Freddy he's he's out, rebooted into safe mode. In safe mode. And that's he, why he's friendly to Gregory. Safe the mode. None of the other animatronics are. He's no longer under the control. Of he's a prototype. Of course, it's a safe mode. In a sense, you could say he's thinking for himself. This one detail is why I feel that ruined Freddy here has to be the same as our best boy from security. Yes, Matt Pat. Has been yes. From the system, one that was rebooted in safe mode, taking exactly. Okay. Almost guaranteed. I'm glad he's covering this. Connected to the Freddy from the original game. Weird Freddy curveballs aside though, this game makes it abundantly clear that I was right on the money with my last few theories about how AI is now the major focus of the series. And specifically AI programs that have been corrupted by yeah, sure. old evil data. Hence why okay. everything is wrapped in this purple or pink code. Well, everything except for Roxy. Instead of being made out of purple code like the rest of the animatronics, she instead has sections of her body made up of green code. Oh, specifically no. around her face, her arm, and her foot. Making her look a lot like she did at the beginning of Security Breach. It's strange right? But it actually ties into our previous theories. This neural network uh -oh. complex isn't just influenced uh -oh. by Afton. According to the books, the AI program was originally built to play with Charlie, a girl that wore a green wristband in order for the security puppet to protect her. That's why we um, see Tiger Rock, the book's manifestation of this same AI, with two colored eyes. It has evil and good data inside it. Uh, the electronics are tapped into different amounts of that same code. Did, did, what? Did you just say... Hang on, hang on. Okay. Did he just say that in the books it is made clear that the Charlie AI I forgot what he said. 
let's let's run it back according to the books the ai program was originally built to play with charlie a girl that wore a green wristband in order for the that's puppet to not true her. that's why we see tiger rock that's not true manifestation of this same ai with two that's misinformation it has evil and good data inside of it and different animatronics are tapped into different amounts of that same code that's why roxy is surrounded by green code that makes her look like she was originally supposed to green is the color of protection of safety her influence is now putting green markers over the parts of the system that are good this duality is actually best exemplified by believe it or not the daycare attendant sun and moon or eclipse as they're known when fused together since the beginning of security breach this thing's presence in the game has always felt very random like why is he here i don't is think so scary thing to chase us around it's Maybe it's pretty clear it ties into vanessa and vanny she was such a random design the duality light and darkness sun and moon well now we know in one of ruins many lore heavy easter eggs if you go up to him with the mask on while there's only one generator left to activate you'll hear a new line that states no, 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 no. It, it's not safe yet turn on the other generator clearly eclipse is conflicted one half wants to protect you but it's getting shut away by the darker more okay that's half. He that's good, good and evil that's combined. good evidence he represents both codes competing within the same body other animatronics are more of a sliding spectrum some are more corrupt than others but eclipse represents the balance that naturally exists within this neural network system which leads us then to the ending of the game whether gregory is actually the one trying to kill cassie in the final moments is a theory for another day instead i'd rather focus on this the mimic tunnels at the end of the game we're chased by an endoskeleton known as the mimic a robot that's able to learn from and copy other creatures but even before we get to the elevator Gregory tells us his friend, presumably Vanessa, has these plans for the underground tunnels. Yeah. My friend has access to the building now. Just follow the instructions. But what are the tunnels? Why are they here? Who put them here? These tunnels aren't just random. Someone has been down here before. They've installed lighting and an elevator and everything. We also know it wasn't Gregory and Vanessa because they're on the opposite side of the room that the mimic was locked in. The pizza plex side, complete with the mixes system. We also know that these tunnels uh, are part of the FNAF I don't know about that. Because the game makes a point to show that we're a number of floors far below that building. It tells us that this location has to be older than the FNAF 6 pizzeria. So again, I ask, what are these tunnels for and why are they here? Well, the clues to finding that answer are hidden in the mimics room normally you wouldn't be able to see any of this stuff you break down the wall you enter a cutscene, and the mimic starts to chase you however at this point steel wool understands that the internet gonna do what they're <laughs> gonna do we're gonna rip through the files we're gonna free cam our way all across these maps and we're gonna crank up the brightness hunting for clues and sure enough there is a lot that's hidden just yeah. in the site inside the mimics room are two costumes a grandma bird and an elephant clown there also seems like there's supposed to be a third costume a lion wearing a varsity jacket but that one i was only able to find in the game file that said, in one of the game's secret endings, the mimic wears a costume that's kind of a mix of yeah. all three of these. To look like Gregory. The evidence that we need there. And overall, it's a pretty interesting find. We know from the books that the mimic is a fan of wearing costumes. In the mimic story, as well as the Pizzaplex epilogues, we know that the mimic mainly cycles between two costumes, a mushroom and a jester. In the story, Edwin, our parallel for the game's Henry, was responsible for turning those costumes into animatronics for Fazbear. And that right there, that's an important detail. You see, the books make it clear that those costumes came from a time before Edwin made Chica into the first animatronic. In other words, these off-branded characters like a jester and a mushroom predate practically everything else that we see in the games. They no, I, I think Chica already existed. characters was officially decided. When mm, Edwin disappears yeah, after okay. the death of his son, Fazbear Entertainment goes to his abandoned home and reclaims all of their property. The mimic, the costumes, everything. Okay. Think this is only specific to the books? It's not. I suspect that we've been hearing about these costumes ever since night four of FNAF 3. No replacements arrived. You'll be expected to wear the temporary costumes provided to you. Keep in mind that they were found on very short notice, so questions about appropriateness slash relevance but that's not all. I don't know. In the FNAF 6 location, we find ourselves in a massive cave system full of bioluminescent mushrooms and waterfalls. This immediately felt weird to me. I mean, it is the first time that we've ever been in a place like this. A place that is outside of a building location in this franchise. So why now? Why this particular setting? Why such a beautiful cave with such specific details? It's odd because we've never I think seen you're thinking like too hard about it. Series. Well, almost never. Princess the Quest. Second novel, oh. The Twisted One. As a friendly reminder, that's the one where the main character gets bored by an animatronic in the end. Good memories had by all. When Charlie awakens from being trapped inside one of the twisted animatronics, she finds herself inside of an old Freddy Fazbear pizzeria. <laughs> I love how John her, also went through this. discovers a cave system with, wait for mushrooms. it, glowing mushrooms. For goodness water. sake. What does it mean? Uh. The more I looked into it, the more I realized the strong parallels between Ruin and the original. Oh my god. In both cases, we we've just watched the same video twice. Ages her that goes missing. She finds an old pizzeria. Uh. 
Ага. Какая?
same like credibility for that like good job um connecting to the to the novel trilogy i i just think that they're both kind of they, they're both just kind of slightly missing the point and i, and I think Although it's okay to theorise, I, I, I do think that the story is very much... It's quite apparent, and I, I think it's been the most apparent that has been in in years. I, I think that ruin is, is pretty easy to get. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. It's it's a tricky one because I think anything goes, and I and I think that they, they do have validity in these arguments. I just think that they need to take the recent books more seriously and stop diving so deep into them and picking out tiny details even though that's great i i think it's just so far from what the intention was you know anyway let me know in the in the comments below what you thought of these theories and if you agree with me as well um i i don't have much else to say other than of course i'm gonna be making my own theory video soon um about Ruin because I haven't done, I haven't actually done any theories apart from the Candy Cadet one. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm going to be doing that. Uh, be, be sure to stick around for that. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will see you then. Goodbye.